All right, everyone, welcome back. We're all the way up to week 14. Uh, 14 just happens to be my lucky number, so I can pretty much promise you that any and all picks that I have this week are going to be absolute home runs. Uh, probably going to name the perfect lineup for you this week, so um, just want to make sure you're, you're keeping notes. I assume, Pat, um, Pat, I assume you're keeping notes? Yes, I okay, always perfect. keep notes. All right, perfect. So this is the week 14 uh, fantasy six-pack NFL DFS podcast, hopefully to have a a new name starting next week. So something, yeah, Pat, something Pat and I are working on. Um, so let's uh, hope and pray, if you will, that um, come next week uh, we got a little something for you. So um, amen, to that. amen to that is right, brother. Um, so Pat, did you want to take a quick little minute to to do a rundown of week thirteen? Yeah, quick little recap last week. You know. Uh, Core plays, some guys that we had on uh, on our radar. Uh, CMC just didn't live up to his normal standards. Still a normal day for anybody else at 17 and a half points, but definitely expecting more out of him. Uh, Devontae Parker, 10 targets, four straight game. The guys had over 10 targets. You know, the one, the one fucking week I don't play Parker in like the last month is, is the week that he actually blows up. Fucking easy, yeah. man. You, you got to start listening to me, David. I'm saying that. So I seven know. catches, 159 yards, two TDs out of him. Almost 38 points. Jared Goff, like I said, didn't want to play the guy. Everything going wrong, but I did it anyways. 424 yards, two touchdowns, just under 28 points. Carson Wentz got back on track, just as expected, against that absolutely horrible Miami defense. And... He threw the ball a ton to Alshon Jeffrey. 16 targets, 9 catches, 137 yards. That's kind of a sneaky one for the Monday night showdown stack, too. So keep that in mind. Uh, so for me, real quick, uh, I mean, I had, I had Jacobs, Lindsay, and Doyle as my core plays. Uh, I mean... I wasn't necessarily wrong about Jacobs. He you know, had a 100-yard game, but he literally didn't do anything else. Um, no end zone. Did not catch a ball, did not have a target even, didn't get in the end zone. So, you know, 100 yards is awesome, but for fantasy purposes, it's 13.4 points. So, um, Philip Lindsay still hasn't had that breakout game. We'll talk about him later because apparently I'm in love with him. And yep. then um, Jack Doyle had a huge week last week, so that was good. Um Nick Foles really screwed me and probably everyone, well, anyone else who played him over. Uh, that wasn't pretty. Sam Darno was a, a pivot that I had that didn't work out. He finally um, had a letdown game. Um, I did have a nice dart throw, though. I had Darius Geis, who um, had a big game against that Carolina defense. So we'll see if maybe we can't pick that Carolina defense apart again this week. So, do you want to go ahead and talk about your core plays then for the week that people give a shit about, week 14? Yeah, the one that we're playing this week, right? Right, right, so, right, right. All right, so I've got Kirk Cousins this week, Minnesota quarterback. Guys, at 6700 bucks. Uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm kind of taking a page out of Dave's book. Uh, I'm not going to get cute with the, with the QB choice this week. Uh, it's going to be Kurt Cousins. I'm going to set it. I'm going to forget it. He's going to be the quarterback that I'm going to run out there. Uh, fair to say that, you know, with all the great QB plays so far this season um, and the options that there is, that I think he's kind of been overlooked a little bit. Uh, he's playing at a pretty high level since week five, over 290 yards a game, two and a half touchdowns a game average. He's only got two interceptions that he's thrown and had one fumble. Um He's only had one game that he hasn't thrown multiple touchdowns in. His last matchup against the lowly Detroit Lions, 338 yards, four TDs, over 32 fantasy points. Play Kirk Covens with constant confidence this week. Uh, and uh, he could potentially be getting Thielen back, but I don't know how that health thing is working out. I don't think he's going to play, but against the Lions, I don't think it matters. Right. Um, so, you know, the other guy I got is, uh, Devonte Freeman, you know, Dave's talking about picking apart that Carolina Rundy, uh, Devonte, in my opinion is the clear cut number one in Atlanta, uh, and Carolina's coming up down after an absolute beat down by the skins last week. Uh, Carolina, uh, 142 yards a game, just under two touchdowns a game. Five and a half yards of carry to opposing uh, running backs this week. Anyone that isn't rostering Freeman, in my opinion, 
is going to be in the minority this week. Um, and he's got a really good opportunity to get it done and put up some big numbers. I mean, sometimes being in the minority is what wins you tournaments too, but um, sometimes being in the minority is what prevents you from winning tournaments. So you really got to be careful and, and know, you know, what the good chalk is and, and what to avoid. Um, I mean, Carolina has been just murdered on the ground. Um, fourth worst against the run, um, fantasy wise in the last four weeks, second worst on the year. Um, I mean, they've been absolutely gashed. Um, $5,400 for Freeman definitely feels like it's one of the best values on the slate. And then you've got Julio status is up in the air for this week as well. I don't know that you could argue that could hurt or that could help Freeman's value just kind of depends on, on how it goes. But, um, I mean, the only problem that I have with Freeman really is is probably I don't think I will own him nearly as much as everybody else. It's just that, you know, it's, it's hard to think he's going to get 20-plus touches, um, even against that Carolina defense. He's only been averaging 12 so far this year. It's certainly possible, but, I mean, I he's definitely got um, a risk factor to him. So when we talk about not getting cute at quarterback – um, the name that I'm expecting you to spit out is Lamar Jackson. Um, <laughs> and, and I mean, at this point, um, you know, he, he shredded the New England defense. Um, he shredded the San Francisco defense. Those are without question the top two defenses in football. So I don't. The matchup does not matter with this guy. I don't think so. Um, so when I see that, you know, he's playing Buffalo. First, my, my first thought, honestly, is, well, they've kind of got a running quarterback. they got Josh Allen, you know, other than, I mean, he's not even remotely on the same level as Allen, um, you know, Lamar and Allen. Um, but if anyone is going to be able to game plan against Lamar, I guess it would make sense that it's a team that also runs the quarterback. But like I said, Jackson's in a just whole different level. I, I'm not going to let that even thought remotely influence my decision. Um, after that game last week against San Francisco, I, I told myself I am never going to play Lamar Jackson at less than 50% exposure if he's healthy the rest of the year. Lamar Jackson, again, like Pat said, not getting cute. I'm putting Lamar in, and I'm building my lineup around him. So, you know, 7400 is pretty expensive. And so normally I would, you know, have core plays that have really good values. And I have one, but I actually surprised myself a little bit when I – say that I'm going to have Leonard Fournette as a core play um, simply because Leonard Fournette's at $7,800 this week. Um, so that's that's pretty pricey. Um, that is the highest that he has been. I lie. He was at $7,900 uh, weeks 9 and 11. But with Leonard Fournette, um, I mean, he's probably in for the biggest workload of the year for him, uh, maybe for any running back this year. Um, the, the big thing for Fournette right now, the reason that I'm paying up for him, and hopefully this isn't, just a fluke, but he's had 25 catches over the last three games. And that is not what you think of when you think of Leonard Fournette. So you give me a guy who's going to tote that rock probably at least 20 times, and then you throw him the opportunity that even if he can catch five passes, like that's gold if he gets in the end zone. So, you know, it's kind of hard for me to, you know, spend up on him because there are some good plays at running back this week um, that are a hell of a lot cheaper. But I think that he has a chance just to go crazy this week. And then the other core play I'm going to have a whole bunch of is apparently, you know, my 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 crush at the moment, my man crush, Philip Lindsay. Your man crush, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Philip Lindsay has not done shit in the last few weeks. Um, but he finds himself in a great matchup this week uh, against the Texans. So they, have, they are allowing 43 points a game to running backs over their last four games, which is the worst in the league. Uh, the year they're still giving up the fourth worst points um, at 28 and a half points, so a little more reasonable um, per game. And at this point, he's firmly entrenched as that Denver, uh, you know, RB one, and they got Drew Locke making his second start. So this very well is the breakout game for Lindsey, and at 5300, um, I'm gonna be there when he hits it. What about um, Fades for you this week, Pat? Who are you kind of sticking away from that other people are gonna be playing? Uh, you know, even, uh, I, Delvin cook for me is my fade. Um, he's, I think the second highest priced guy on the slate period. Uh, yep. You're right. Week. You're right. And at 9,500 bucks. And I know what you're thinking, you know, they're playing the freaking lions, right? 
and everyone and their mom is going to be rostering this guy. How can you possibly fade him? Well, over the last four weeks, the Lions have only given up an average of about 68 yards a game and one total rushing touchdown. Now, if you remember from last week, Cooks got injured, um, and from what I read, you know, he says it's some kind of a freak thing in his chest, and it just matters how he falls or how he lands. So one bad hit, and and he's out, and you just blew all this coin uh, to have him in your lineup. Minnesota is in a playoff hunt. They're going to take every precaution necessary, I think, to have this guy on the field come playoff time. Uh, they have a fully capable backup in Alex Madison. Um, and I'm just not going to take the risk with his health in question against the line defense that has actually been pretty solid the last four weeks. No, nobody believes you when you say that, Pat. Not, you can <laughs> – no – Nobody's gonna be like, oh yeah, Lions defense is pretty solid against the run. But I mean, when Snacks Harrison plays, like he makes a world of difference. Yeah. Um, and, and I could at at least as of Thursday night, um, I could argue with confidence both ways and say, yeah, man, ninety five hundred dollars for Cook. Um, he's a little bit banged up. Lions, you know, rushing defense isn't quite as bad as the numbers say. Especially if you know Snacks is in the is in the you know game, and then you also have the risk of a blowout where you know you know David isn't a hundred percent, and they just let Madison just run and go crazy. And then I could also argue and say, well, man, Dalvin Cook is a beast, and Thielen's going to be out possibly. You know they're going to involve him in the passing game and the running game. He could just go crazy. So I don't know. As of Thursday, I don't know what to think. I guess if I had to go one way or the other, I would say. At ninety five hundred dollars, not knowing that he's healthy or not, I think fading him is probably my play at this moment as well. But it's it's tough, man. It's tough to fade someone who is so good and so talented, has been so great all year against such a shitty team. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I yeah, I don't know. It's I, I, I'm leading price. that way. I mean, the biggest thing yep. for me is the price. Yeah, ninety five is really high. Um, if he's two grand less, then I'm gonna probably oh, yeah. play some roulette and have at it. Yeah, eighty nine hundred was his previous high. So yeah, it's 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 tough, man. Especially this week when you got to really kind of save some money. Um, I, I mean, I feel seventy eight hundred is paying up for for Fournette. So add seventeen hundred more onto that. Mm-hmm. Ugh, I don't know, man. Um, so. Stuff that I'm fading isn't actually necessarily individuals. It's more, it's more uh, position groups. So, um, I'm I'm fading Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham. Uh, Landry has been absolutely on fire lately. Um, he's had at least 13 points um, over the last six games, um, and he's only had less than 10 targets once. So he's definitely getting his action. And Odell had put up double digit points in six straight games until last week. Um, so it sounds like they're guys that you would want to play, but um, I- I'm going to fade them because this Bengals defense has actually been a lot better than you think, at least lately. Um, the DVOA against the pass this year is still second worst in the league, uh, but they've been eighth best against wide receivers. So they've only been giving up 28.9 points um, to the entire wide receiver group over the last four weeks. And I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it with my own eyes, but they were actually the ninth best against wide receivers this year, um, giving up 32 and some change a game. So at the prices for those two guys, um, and the fact that if you do pay up, you got to hit, I'm going to avoid those guys. We're talking about the one-win Cincinnati Bengals, right? I know, and their passing defense, I mean, specifically against wide receivers in DFS, has been pretty good. I didn't believe it either, uh, but it's true. And then the other thing I'm going to fade is something that I was heavy on last week and it absolutely burned me, but I'm completely fading the Jaguars passing game. Everything that involves not being Leonard Fournette, I'm not touching. And that's part of the reason why I like Fournette so much this week too, um, is I think they're, they're going to give him the ball like crazy. Um, over the last four weeks, uh, Chargers have been the sixth toughest against the quarterback and they are the top um, against wide receivers. And then for the year, they are fifth best against the quarterback and their third toughest against the wide receivers. So um, you got Minshew back underneath center, and I think you just have every reason in the world to just feed Fournette the rock. 
Um, so, you know, that just to me seals the deal on, on paying up to the 7,800 to get him. What about pivots this week, Pat? Yeah. So, uh, you know, at first I, I kind of had this in as a dart throw, but then I realized it really wasn't a dart throw. Once I kind of read into it a little bit, I got, I got Danny Amendola in Detroit at 4,000. Never heard of him. Never heard of him. Right. Never heard of him. Uh, he's an ex, uh, Patriot, ex no. Dolphin, ex. I mean, he played all over the place, right? He's probably but, the only ex Patriot the Lions have on their team. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure of that. Uh, the last meeting against the Vikings, Amendola had 11 targets, eight catches, 105 yards. Last week, with Blau at the quarterback <laughs> position, uh, he led the t- uh, the Lions. I almost said the Tigers. He led the Lions. The, you know, the Tigers <laughs> probably wouldn't be much worse. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, he led the Lions in targets with eight. Uh, they're going to be down in this one, so Blau is going to have to throw the ball quite a bit. Uh, Kenny Galladay at 6,700. Marvin Jones at 5,400. I think they're going to be drawing quite a bit of attention uh, in a very favorable matchup. And an affordable guy... Minnesota's past is only, you know, they've given up the fourth most fantasy points a game to opposing wide receivers. Uh, my pivot is going to be playing Danny Amendola as opposed to to KG and Marvin Jones. Yeah, and Hawkinson is out as well now. He's on the IR. So not that he was getting a ton of targets, but if, you know, Blau was going to have to dump the ball off, then that means McKissick, if he's, you know, in the backfield, will get more and then he won't have, um, you know, Hawkinson to dump it off to, which means Amendola could get some more run there as well. So, um, you know, I could definitely see that. And, yeah, Minnesota's defense, like you said, very surprising. Um, I mean, over the last four weeks, they are they're giving up the third most fantasy points to wide receivers at 45 points a game. And on the entire year, they're fourth worst, giving up almost 40 a yeah. game. So... Yeah, I mean, I, I can definitely see a lot of people being in on Galladay. Um, me personally, I, I actually like Marvin Jones probably more than I should. Um, but yeah, I can get behind the um, I can get behind the Amendola play too. Um, I mean, that that's not too bad. That's kind of sneaky. Um, the only thing I don't like about him is he just doesn't have that upside. So I don't know if he's a guy that can win you a tournament. Um, I mean, he's only scored double digits points twice this year. Uh, and he's had between basically five and nine points um, over the last five games. So, I mean, he's consistent, but not consistently what you need. So I just don't quite see a path to Amendola getting 16 points uh, to get to that 4X value, which is kind of what I would consider mandatory if I'm you know playing such a risky guy. But if he gets in the end zone, that kind of you know settles it right there. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, um, I've got two different pivots, um, and they're – Kind of for different reasons, I guess. Um, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick, he's at 6,000. And so if you're, you know, considering Drew Brees or Tom Brady, Jameis Winston, uh, or even Josh Allen, I think you can do yourself a favor and just pivot that right to Fitzmagic. Um, dude's had at least 14 points in every start this year. He's had 20-plus points in four of his seven starts. Now, the Jets' defense hasn't really been that bad against the pass. Um, they've been giving up 16 and a half points, um, a game to QBs over the last four. So that's 10th best in the league. And then just under 18 on the year, which is right in the middle of the pack. But if you're looking to save some money, uh, Fitzmagic is the second lowest price quarterback, um, that I'd be willing to play this week. And we'll get into the lowest here a little bit later. And if you really need to break a tie between him and someone else, just, just think about how much fun it is to say Fitz Magic. So Fitz Magic, isn't that awesome? Like Fitz Magic, like that Fitz just, Magic. That sounds nice. Even coming from you, Pat, that sounds. I know. That sounds isn't nice. that cute? It is pretty cute. So I mean, you can also stack Fitz um, and his stunning beard with Parker, um, who's obviously been one of the hottest plays in the game right now. Uh, we talked about him a little bit earlier. So I mean, a dolphin stack, Pat. What could go wrong? Who would have thunk it? Yep, Dolphin stack, baby. My other pivot is is Melvin Gordon. So, I mean, Melvin Gordon is a little bit pricey for me this week. He's at 6400 
But if you're not in on some of the cheaper running backs um, that I think have good matchups, I could definitely argue for Gordon being kind of the low end of the you know good running backs this week. He's had 20-plus carries uh, three of the last four games. Hasn't hit pay dirt in the last two, though. Um, I mean, Eckler's sharing the backfield with him, of course. Um, but he's been getting the share of the carries. Just not getting that, you know, pass catching volume that you're used to getting from Gordon um, with, you know, Eckler kind of stepping up. But still, he has a great matchup against the Jags this week. Um, they've been second worst against the run in the past four games. And on the year, they're the eighth worst. They're DVOA, second worst on the ground. So if Gordon could get himself into the end zone this week, um, he could be a big play even at, you know, a price tag that's probably a little bit higher than we want to pay. But um, definitely a guy that could, you know, differentiate your lineups a little bit. So you got a really interesting here for the contrarian play, Pat. So why don't you tell the Saints fans out there um, what you're thinking? Yeah, so my contrarian play this week is Alvin Kamara. What Alvin Kamara is your contrarian play? Didn't you do this last week with Jared Goff? Now, here's the thing. You know, San Francisco, arguably the best defense in the entire NFL, so let's just be frank and say that Kamara has been serviceable at best this year. He's only got two touchdowns this season. They both came in week three. San Francisco only gives up 80 yards a game on the ground and has only given up three touchdowns, total touchdowns to running backs all year. People are going to shy away from Kamara because his production has been lackluster. The matchup is terrible. Drew Brees is going to need somebody else to get the ball to while San Francisco focuses their efforts on Michael Thomas. Alvin Kamara, my contrarian play, I do not think he's going to be highly owned this week. No. I mean, what what kind of exposure do you think you're going to give to Kamara? I mean, how much do you believe in playing him? Uh, I'll probably be 20 25% okay. with him. Um, I... There's, yeah, I'm I'm rolling twenty twenty five percent. I think is where I'm going to be with him because he he can be that that difference if we can find the old Elvin Kamara, and Sean Payton can figure out a way to get this guy in the open field with the ball. Um, it doesn't matter who he's going to play. You know, he's got he's like that Delvin Cook we were talking about earlier. I, don't, I never heard of him. Is just crazy. You just got to get the guy the ball. Yeah. So, I mean, it's hard because obviously we think of Evan Kamara, you know, is a, is an elite running back, um, and I mean, I would like this play a hell of a lot more if he wasn't at seven grand. Uh, I mean, seven grand still is you know a good chunk of change. Um, I mean, that San Francisco defense is for you know for real. So uh, no no t- no doubt about that. Um, and the pricing this week is like we said is pretty difficult. So spending up to that seven grand for Kamara is kind of a tough pill to swallow, but. And just another reason why there's not a lot of people I think exactly. that are going to be playing them. So. Ex- exactly. And, and so that's why this is a terrific contrarian play. Um, ownership is going to be very low on him. Uh, I mean, not just because of the tough matchup. I mean, that obviously has a huge role. But also because, you know, Kamara hasn't been Kamara this year. So, I mean, it's always kind of hard to like a contrarian play. I mean, you know, hence the name. But, I mean, this could definitely be a game changer um, you know, that could completely differentiate your lineup from others in GPP tournaments. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I can definitely see that, that working out, man. It's, it's a little, it takes balls, but we both like balls. So, yep. um, and we got big ones. Yeah, so. we do. Yeah. If you're playing Kamara 20%, you got bigger ones than I do, but that's okay. Yeah. That's not, oh, yeah. you could do worse, man. So my contrarian plays another very talented running back. Um, I'm going with Joe Mixon. Uh, he's at 5800 so 1200 dollars cheaper than Kamara. Um, I mean, Browns are giving up a total of 18 points a game um, over the last four to running back, so that's third best in the league. And on the year, they're giving up about 23 and a half points, which is pretty much middle of the pack. It's, it's 12th in the league. So, I mean, all in all, it's a difficult matchup, uh, especially when you consider that the Bengals will probably be playing from behind. Uh, but the Bengals, you know, at least recently, have shown a willingness to pound the ball with Mixon. Uh, regardless of the score, he had like what 31 carries, I think, in, in a near blowout. So, um, 
you know, Mixon's put up 17 or more points in four of his last five games. And there's so many good running backs on the slate this week. Um, now that we are past all the bye weeks, that I think Mixon's going to be overlooked. And he definitely has a chance to, to be a steal, even at 5,800. So, yeah, that's a good play. I like that one. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much of it I'll do because there's so many running backs that I do like. But, I mean, again, you hell, if you put Mixon and Kamara in your backfield, I think that you are greatly differentiating yourself as long as they score. Yeah. Um, so this is always the hardest one for me, but um, dart throw of the week, Pat. What do you got for a dart throw? Yeah, I'm going to go, and I, I this week there might be a possibility to play a little bit of these guys. Uh, mm-hmm. Sure, absolutely. So uh, I'm going to roll out, you know, in a few lineups as needed, Paris Campbell. Paris, uh, Paris Hilton? Paris Hilton, Campbell. Okay. Soup. Uh, Paris from Hilton the, Campbell Soup. Gotcha. The, the Colts wide receiver, 3,200 bones for this guy. Uh, coming off an injury, back in the lineup. He gets thrown into the fire with a amazing matchup against possibly the worst pass defense in the NFL and turns out to be the clear-cut number two wide receiver behind Pascal. Uh, with all the injury woes that are going on in Indianapolis. Tampa gives up over 200 yards a game, 13 and a half yards a catch, a touchdown and a half a game, and over 30 fantasy points a game to opposing wide receivers. I think Paris Campbell is going to get some work, five, six, maybe seven targets, um, and at 3200 bucks, uh, a good opportunity for him to capitalize. Let me tell you, how dare you disrespect the Detroit Lions defense and call the Tampa Bay defense the worst in the league? That that is just utter disrespect, Patrick. The Lions have busted their ass all year to be the worst defense in the league, and you're going to turn around and pull that? Well, I said pass defense, though. Pass defense. Tampa Bay's run defense is phenomenal. They just got to figure it out from the linebackers back. Yeah, man. So last four weeks, the Tampa Bay has given up um, an average of just a squeak under 50 points a game to yeah. to wide receivers. Slightly better on the course of the year. So they're, they're only giving up just under 47 points a game to, to wide receivers on the season, both of which are the worst in the league. So, yeah, Paris Campbell, um, I mean, as far as a dart throw is concerned, I, I think you nailed exactly what you're looking for, man. Um, you know, a kid that's got some serious talent, um, very well should have a real opportunity this week. Obviously, if T.Y. plays, I think that almost eliminates Paris Campbell to, to some extent, but um, wouldn't be too hard for him to get the 13 points that would equate to the 4X that we're looking for with risky guys. So um, I think Paris Campbell is a phenomenal dart throw. Um, much better, I think, than mine because – I think people will play mine a little bit um, just because it's probably an even better matchup, which almost sounds impossible. Um, but I think that, that Duck Hodges is, again, if you got if you got the testicles to, to go ahead and dump him out there at 5,900, um, he's going against, uh, I mean, a, a worse overall pass defense um, than Tampa Bay. Um, if we consider, you know, quarterbacks and, tight ends and running and you know wide receivers all together um tampa's the worst against specifically wide receivers but uh, arizona's the worst across the board um and so for duck hodges you know that that's more of a benefit but um i mean the cards are like i said the absolute worst not just over the last you know recent period of four weeks but the entire year um they are second worst against wide receivers um over the last four and their third worst um on the year and then let's not forget about the tight ends. Um, I mean, they do have Vance McDonald. So they are the third worst against tight ends over the last four and the worst against tight ends on the entire year. Now, you got Juju and Connor, um, both unlikely to play. So it is a little bit of a gamble on top of the gamble that you'd already be taking. Um, but, I mean, at least you can throw a duck hat on, you know, and root for some, root for some Hodges. So I don't know how much of him I will own. I won't go crazy. It's, you know, you're probably going to look at 10, 15%. But, I mean, anyone, I mean, if if Pat was lined up at quarterback against the, the cards, 
um, I consider playing them. So I think I'll throw a little uh, love to Duck Hodges too. Hey, let's not forget, I got a cannon, Dave. You should know that. Well, I mean, yeah, okay, you sure? Why not, Pat? <laughs> yep, you got, and I and I'm 130 pounds, so yeah, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, one thing that I know you've got the notes here that I we should just probably touch on real quick is. Um, I know you talked about it a little bit, but maybe go a little bit more into um, the the Madison play. Yeah, uh, you know Alexander Madison is at forty five hundred bucks this week. If for some reason Delvin Cook is not going to play, uh, and you can find that out prior to game time, this becomes an absolute no brainer uh, pivot play and possibly even a core play. Uh, if, I, if Cook does not play, I will have Madison in 100% of everything I play. Yeah, the value alone at 4,100 for the number one running back against the statistically worst defense of the NFL against the run, averaging 4.8 yards a carry this season. He's a poor man's Cook. Uh, I mean, kind he, of the he really is. Kind of a player. <laughs> uh, massive breakout potential for this guy if Cook is out. Alexander Madison, keep an eye on Cook's health. Yeah, I mean, it really sounds like he's going to play, but um, I mean, even if he, even if Cook does play, like I said earlier, his health and just the potential blowout of that game concerns me. I don't know that you could touch Madison without knowing that Cook isn't going to play. But I guess if you really wanted to get absolutely just batshit crazy. You could play Madison and just kind of hope that he does get, you know, quite a bit of garbage time or at least, you know, they kind of expand the share a little bit more, um, you know, because Cook maybe isn't fully healthy and you could just throw him in there as a flex and, you know, kind of just hope for the best. It's not the worst idea in the entire world. No, and I might actually do that with a handful, you know, two, three, four lineups. Just throw them in there and make something really weird of it and mm-hmm. see what happens. Sometimes the the weirdest shit ends up the best, man. And you just, I mean, there's a lot of um, a lot of question marks with with Dalvin Cook right now. So again, it's only Thursday, so yeah, we'll know a lot more on Sunday. It could be an absolutely terrible idea by the time you go to set your lineups. Um, we'll we'll see. But all right, Pat. Um, week fourteen, pretty much in the books, man. Um, like I said, hopefully we'll have uh, something something new to talk about next week as far as the show is concerned. Uh, we shall see. But, Patrick, I, I wish you the best of luck, my friend. You and, as well, buddy. Um, nice talking with you as always. And uh, I guess we will see everyone next week. Good luck, y'all.